welcome to Afchat Village Kitchen. Today we are going to learn how to make fura or fula as we know it in Ghana. It is a beverage that comes from the northern parts of Ghana. They love it. The tribes in the northern parts of Ghana love it. But equally it is enjoyed throughout the other um, regions in Ghana and it's mainly sold as street food so people think it's so difficult to make but I'm going to show you how easy it is to make it and even living abroad you can still enjoy this beverage so stay with me as we cook fura so today we are making fura and I just want to say thank you to you if you're a subscriber thank you so much for subscribing and if you haven't turned on your notification button, please do if you have already. Thank you and well done because there are so many recipes coming your way you don't want to miss out. So do turn it on if you haven't. And if you're a new um, follower or you just stumble upon this video, this is After Village Kitchen. You're welcome. It is the home of traditional African delights. And I just don't give you traditional African foods mainly Ghanaian foods, but I give you more other recipes to change up your everyday cooking, to make your cooking life easy. I love my cooking hacks and tips, so I share with you because I just want you to have a stress-free cooking life and above all to enjoy your cooking like I do. I love cooking, but I hate all the other, you know, chopping, prepping, cleaning bits. Why? Do that when you can just enjoy cooking. So I have some kitchen hacks and tips that I use. So I, I I share it with you so that you can also enjoy your cooking and have a stress-free life. Plus, when you are here, I give you a step-by-step -step process in um, cooking the recipes. So it is easy to follow. If you don't know how to cook, if you are new to African cooking, this is the place to be because you will be a pro very soon in cooking Ghanaian dishes and other dishes as well. So welcome and don't forget to subscribe because there's so much more here for you. Thank you very much and let's enjoy making fura. Okay, so let's go through the ingredients for making fura. It is so simple, simple ingredients. You won't believe how simple and easy it is to make. So we have here millet. Millet is the main ingredient in fura. But this is millet flour. This is the um, grey millet flour. And in here I've got some chilies. This is the bed eye chili. You can use about any red kind of chili that you have, but traditionally they do use the bed eye chili and this is a dried form. So I'm soaking it in water to make it nice and soft for easy grinding. And the spices that we use are quite simple. So in here, I've got two spices on my plate. This is the Efom Wisa. And this is the Estru Wisa. To find out about all these spices and to know more, please go to www.aftradvillagekitchen.com under blocks. There's a knowledge bank session section where you can find information about all these um, spices, the health benefits, and how you can use them. So this is it. And we've got some huintia and pepper. This is cloves in um, English and this is huintia. Again, all these um, spices and including their English names are can be found under www.aftradvillagekitchen.com blogs and there's a knowledge bank section. You'll find all of this information. And I've got some water. That, this is basically it. So let's start cooking. So to start, I'm using my asenka. If you haven't got an asenka, that is fine. You can um, just use any uh, meal. You just need to be able to grind these 
dry spices into a smooth form so you just need any kind of meal or mortar and pestle to do it but i've got my asenka and my tapuri to do it so to start i need to these um spices went here they've got so you see it's like a seeded pod so they've got seeds in there and they um the seeds tend to be bitter I'm not using much and sometimes I don't mind having the seeds in there but you do have a little bit of a bitter taste after taste uh, um, in your food so to take them out what you do is you just crush it in your asenka or your chopping board wherever you can crush it and get this basically get these seeds out so if you get these seeds out you know that you're not going to have a bitter um, aftertaste in your food so those are the seeds so I have toasted the dry spices just as soon as it begins to pop you hear the popping sound tap 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 then you know it is ready so you take it off the heat and especially when you're using it, your earthenware pot take it off you don't immediately starts to pop because it still continues to toast and um, because it's so hot, make sure you're holding your senka with your um, some tea towel or anything that will help you not burn. All right, so I forgot something in my initial introduction of the spices. I forgot to tell you about adding fresh ginger. So I've got my fresh ginger here. Please, for the full recipe, go to www afteradvillagekitchen.com under recipes you will find the recipe for furua there and you know how much you need for each of the ingredients so i'm going to grind all of this together and to help me grind i love my kitchen hats yes so you know ginger is so when you're using your sinker it's a little bit difficult to to get it ground so this is what i do i basically grate it in here uh-huh <laughs> and it helps me grind easily so not much effort needed to get it nicely ground so there you go so you know with fura the spices is it depends on how much you really want it sometimes i love a very um spicy when i say spicy not spicy hot but in, in terms of flavor I love it to be a little bit hot spicy hot and full of spices so this gives you a good I think it gives you a good balance but feel free to adjust it to suit your tastes okay but these are the um, spices that you need so go ahead and grind it you can use whatever you don't need an asenka to do this but to help your cedar spices to grind nicely by all means use um, like a meal or a mortar and pestle oh man this smells amazing if you are familiar with fura you would know that you are making fura this is fura in the making if you are not familiar with fura just get excited because you know that you are making something good not just good to eat but good for your body so let's continue so now that the spices have been grounded i've got my measured water here and to make it easy to get out of it out of the asenka or my apotoyua i just add a bit of water and you know just mash it and be able to rinse it out and get everything mixed in and out of the asenka into my millet so just make sure you've got all the spices you don't want to lose any flavor so i will add this to my millet flour I want to make sure I mix, I'm getting everything out, so I'll use all the water. Mm. 
make sure you get it out of all the ridges so take your time so I've got all the spices taken out of the asenka with the water my measured water and I'm mixing it in here you can use your fingers to do the mixing apparently or it is believed that traditionally some people have hands or fingers that really gets your um, dough to ferment really quickly but if you're not comfortable with that don't and if you don't know whether your fingers are one of those that can really get it to ferment quickly you know you can let it go off or it can be good or it can be bad so if you're not sure what your fingers will do just um, use a wooden spoon like I am using here and this is my still my measured water and use it to you know clean it up as much as you can so be go slow on your water and use it so I've got my dough mix or I'll say my fura mix in here enough water enough spices you see the bubbles have started forming so you know that there's some activity going on here so we need to let it ferment give it a day depending on the, your weather or your environment if it is too hot maybe a day will not will be too much but what you do is you, you keep an eye on it when it starts to ferment you smell that the the spices or the flavors intensify so and you see the bubbles on the top so you know it is fermenting really good you can let it ferment as long or as you know short as you want but keep an eye on it if you're not ready to take it to the next stage after fermentation just put it in your fridge and it will slow down the fermentation process but to to whilst it is fermenting cover it with cling film so that you don't have anything else you know falling in and also when you cover it with clean film you know you create some like a, an environment which is a which has a bit more heat and it raises the temperature so it helps with the fermentation process to go on a bit much more quicker all right so we have to let this ferment so we'll come back when this has fermented i'm going to let it ferment overnight so now our fura mixture or fuller mixture as we know it in Ghana has fermented and we are ready to move on to the next stage so join me don't go anywhere we tell that your fura or mixture has fermented you see that water color changed it now looks a bit brown the smell too is intensified with all the spices so you know that the fermentation has gone on so now we can't you see we've got all this chaff in here we can't make a you know make our fura because the fura is a beverage you mix it with milk and you drink it you wouldn't really want to have all that chaff in there so we need to do what we need to sieve it out so to sieve it i'm putting it in here and i'll sieve it i don't want to add too much water because I'm, i'll need it as a dough Okay, so I need it as a dough. So I'm going to sieve it and I'm going to add in a bit more millet flour, which I have measured here. And then cook it on my stove top into a dough. So now let's sieve it and then we'll move on to the next stage. So I put the mixture in here and I've just been stirring it to try and get most of the chaff out and I've added a bit of water to rinse this one out just a bit this is measured water if you want the full recipe please go to my website and you find the full recipe there so you see how much chaff I have all oh, from all that pepper and all the spices you don't want this in your fura recipe or your final fura. and I've just been stirring it to try and get most of the chaff out and I've added a bit of water to rinse this one out just a bit this is measured water if you want the full recipe please go to my website and you find the full recipe there so you see how much chaff 
I have oh, from all that pepper and all the spices you don't want this in your fura recipe or your final fura so you need to do this so this is it so we don't need this bit so we throw this out and now we will transfer our, our mixture into our cooking pot and then we'll add in some millet flour for the full recipe please visit Aftrad Village Kitchen www.aftradvillagekitchen.com and the recipes tab you will find all this information so I will add in now, add in 50 grams of flour, add it in a bit at a time and stir because we want to form a thick dough, a thick dough and then we'll start cooking it on the stove top. You make sure you press out all the lumps. So now we start to cook this dough or the mixture so it's quite thick and now that it's warming up you see that it's getting lumpy so you need to keep on stirring so that you know the lump, lump, lumps are distributed evenly and you know it's like making porridge or um, banku. So keep on stirring, lower the heat to help you with your pace. If you're not fast enough, do lower the heat so you can get it all stirred nicely. So you see how hard it's forming. It's like you're making banku. So yep, yeah, you keep on stirring. until all the color changes and it's cooked you know well you don't want it it's just like how zakuko you don't really want to be cooking it through and through but you want it you know kind of cooked a bit so do this see how hard it's become it doesn't take long, about five minutes, well, depending on the quantity. This is a small quantity, so it doesn't really take long. So, as soon as it comes into a bowl like this, it is done. So, you switch off your heat, and we are almost done. All you need to do is to wait for it to cool down a bit, just so that you can handle it and you you will form it into balls and you get your a little bit of um the, the millet flour ready and you roll the balls in the flour so right now we'll just wait for it to cool down a little bit before we form the balls so now let's start to form our fura balls so you take a sizable amount depending on how much, how big or small you want it. Get your hands with some of the millet flour and basically form your bowls. What happens is as it is drying up, you're having all these, you know, it goes really dry. So the millet flour makes it not go totally dry and lumpy. So you form your perfect balls, add your flour to help you form the balls. So it's warm, it hasn't totally cooled down, it's nice and warm, but easy to handle. Adding the flour, the millet flour helps you to roll it out nicely into a bowl or shape it into a bowl. Otherwise, it gets sticky. I think I'll have 
two small ones left. So basically here's your fura and you just keep on rolling it, you know, find something that you are able to toss it around. You want it to be nicely coated in the millet flour. You've got your perfectly formed fura balls ready to be used. If you have any ones that didn't really form nicely, just put it back in your palms and shape it up. There you go, your fura.